Hi folks, this is comic book creator and Lost in Space superfan Jeff Nicholson here to answer the question that you've all been wondering, exactly how many planets did the Robinson Party land on in the original Lost in Space series? So let's dive right in with... Number one, Preplanus. How they knew the name of this planet is unclear, except, well, maybe John Robinson named it himself, because after crash landing here in episode three, there they remain for the entire first season in glorious black and white. And this is some of our favorite episodes. They do escape this planet in the first episode of season two, so we get to see Preplanus in color briefly, and they blast off into space. A footnote about Preplanus as it blows to smithereens all around them, and presumably every character they ever met while on this planet. Unless, well, maybe the Keeper rounded up all the animals and monsters they've confronted and took them away in his giant uh, zoo spaceship. Uh, but as for the lost civilization underground, all these uh, suspended animation army soldiers, I think they're dead. Number two, the ghost world. After a brief adventure in space, they land here and it's a quick stop and they are back out of there. Number three, the Purple Mountains Planet. At least that's what I call it. They basically repainted the cyclorama of sandy uh, desert landscapes in the background into these purple mountains for season two. And once again, this is where they crash land and they remain for the remainder of the season. Now, I'm only counting planets that the entire Robinson Party and the Jupiter 2 set down on. So there are some little footnotes here from season two that I'm going to throw out. 3A, the Tribunal Planet. Several members are teleported to what I assume is another world and not a spaceship, but who knows? It's just this place. The Thief's Asteroid. Will Smith, Penny, and the Robot visit this via the sedan chair. 3C, the Western Asteroid. Will and Smith visit this one via the Space Enforcer's ship. The Valhalla Planet, or wherever this was. It looks exactly like the same planet. Only Will and Smith go there. And finally, the Satacons Asteroid, the fake Earth where Debbie, Smith, and Penny visit. Or is it another dimension? I don't know. These Satacons are pretty weird dudes. And now, deja vu, because at the beginning of the next season, the planet they're on is once again threatened, this time by a rogue comet threatening all life there. So they evacuate, say goodbye to the Purple Mountains planet, and once again we ask, what happened to Mr. Tiabo? He went to live on the other side of the planet. What happened to Jeremiah Smith? He just wandered off and was never heard from again. Well, maybe they lived, maybe they died. On to more adventure. Number four, the Slate Mountains planet. Once again, this is an unnamed planet, which I've just given a nickname based on the repainting of the cyclorama. This time they've switched from purple mountains to kind of a blue-gray Slate Mountains motif. This is actually a new soundstage for season three, and it is slightly smaller and a little bit claustrophobic. So they come down on the pod first, then again they crash land the ship. On this world, they have the encounter with Megazor's Hunt, the Space Primevals, the abandoned cyborg machine, one of my favorites, and they meet the alien boy, J5. When they leave this world due to an approaching cosmic storm, they apparently redock the pod off camera because we don't see that happen. Number five. Zeta Solar System 14 S3 Planet 23.6. Don't look at me, this guy named that planet. This is where they encounter the deadly female robot, and they are seen exiting the atmosphere in the first few minutes of the next episode. As you can see, season three has a lot more planet hopping going on, which is a good thing. Number six, the Emerald Planet, or Chroma, as it is also referred to, where they pod land once again and they crash land once again. This time they encounter the Future Illusions Machine and the Hippie Biker Demolition Gang. They depart during the destruction of the planet and once again we redock that pod off camera. Number seven, the Space Creature Planet. Now they're really only orbiting this planet and there's a giant hand outside the window and they get teleported down to some place that may be the planet Another dimension, again, who knows? Uh, but I'm gonna count this as a planet, why not? Number eight, another variation of the nameless Slate Mountains planet. This time we have an off-camera landing, which sometimes happens in season three, apparently to overhaul the power core engine. 
hey, maybe when they threw this space creature into there, I think Will pushed him into the power core engine uh, at the end of the last episode. On this world, they encounter the antimatter world portal, another favorite. The encounter with Chavo and the Ice Princess, visit to Farnham Zoo, and Smith's Happy Acres Hotel. Again, a couple little footnotes here, like 8A, Ago's Planet. Only Will and Dawn visit here via a dimensional doorway. 8B, Farnham Zoo Tour Planet. Uh, apparently he goes to another planet to put on a show and looks exactly like the same planet. Smith, Dawn, Judy, and Penny and the robot all visit via a flight that happens off camera, which is never shown. Number nine, the Sobrams planet. In this episode, the pod lands with Smith, Don, John, Will, and the robot while the Jupiter 2 orbits the planet. But let's call this one a planet. They're having a full adventure here. Number 10, the proto planet. Again, the pod lands and the J2 does a tripod landing. We don't see that too often when they don't crash land. Here on the proto planet, Duplicates are made of the entire crew. Number 11, Nameless Slate Mountain Planet, version three. Uh, with another off-camera landing and departure, here we encounter the Time Merchant's portal and Penny is captured by space pirates. Number 12, Planet Delta. With a nice soft landing in the parking lot, this is essentially the false Alpha Centauri colony that cannot age. Number 13, the vegetable planet. You were waiting for this one. The pod lands and another cool tripod Jupiter 2 landing. Tybo the carrot intends to turn the travelers into plants. Number 14, Slate Mountains planet variation number four. Off camera landing, but they had to be somewhere when Smith and Dawn were sent to the prison planet and Judy had her space beauty contest adventure. Number 15, this is the final one, the junk planet. This is where they landed and this is where they stayed without that season four. So by my count, that's 13 planets the ship and full crew have landed on, or 15 if we count those couple where they just orbit. Or if we count any celestial body visited by any of the Robinson party, or Smith, or Will, or the robot, other than Earth, it's 22. Oh, but speaking of Earth, if we count Earth visits after their liftoff, that's seven more. Will visits Hatfield Four Corners via the matter transfer unit. Will and Smith reach Earth's orbit in a ship stolen from Zalto the Magician. Will again teleports to Earth, this time in Scotland, either in the present time or hundreds of years in the past. It's not quite clear. The full crew go to Earth in 1947. Will Smith and the robot land in Chicago with the duplicate crew in present time. They really did. And Will and Smith and the robot go back in time again, this time to just before liftoff in 1997. So let's not count any of those Earth visits. It's too complicated. I'm sticking with 15. Thanks for watching. One more footnote. Season 3 was not broadcast in the same order that it was filmed, so the filming order differs from the broadcast order. I took the filming order with some slight alterations to help continuity with all that planet hopping. What are you going to do? <laughs> Highly recommended are Mark Cushman's excellent books about the series where you can read about all of these filming orders and other wonderful trivia. And you can also read my books. A couple of them are parodies of Lost in Space in my Ultra Clutch comic and in some of the collections, which are available digitally via Comixology. You can visit me at my old fashioned website or on the loathsome social media if you must. Must we? Nah. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed. This is all just in good fun. Bye bye.